it was a madhouse. Every foot of the slope swarmed with spectators crushed shoulder to shoulder behind the snow fences, trying to find the best view. High ski season in Park City, Utah meant it wasn't too difficult to make an announcement and lasso a crowd of 10,000 split between real and virtual reality attendees. And a cheering crowd would subtly influence the investors. It didn't matter that most of the cheers would come from people who either wanted Charlie to succeed or fail because of bets they've made. Most of them were waiting to see if he would die. To them, Charlie Noble against the mountain was no more than a to-the-death boxing match. They would scream their bloody heads off, just what Charlie and his team wanted. A guy with a shock of electric red hair sailing over his left eyebrow and sparkling against his cheek said, He'll kill himself. I hope so. It's all fake. He's done it before, said another. I'll bet 500 O credits he does it. I've heard about this enhanced thing. Read about it on Wired. It's real. Bullshit. Nothing's real anymore. It's all VR. I'll bet he's not even here. Bet me? 500? Yeah. Okay, you're on. It was hard to believe it had only been four months since Linda's still unsolved murder. So much had happened. The original investors came through with another round of funding, and today was a major demonstration for a new group of money people. His company had uploaded the expertise of nearly 100 contractors, and Charlie was having a ball trying them on for size. With each new skill he acquired, he felt more like the Superman his face was modeled after. CCD now had 10 alpha testers using Enhanced, with approval ratings ranging from fantastic to galactic. The word thrilled couldn't begin to describe how Charlie felt. That word hadn't been invented yet. He closed his eyes and inhaled deeply. A cold rush froze the hairs in his nostrils and filled his head with the fragrance of pine trees. Opening his eyes, he looked out over the snaking rows of observers winding down the mountainside. He raised his hand to his eyebrow and made a gesture like clicking the button on an old-fashioned camera. It switched off his VR, showing that only about a quarter of the spectators were there in real. The rest attended using their Oh Me Too virtual reality double. Thousands more could choose views interpolated from hundreds of tiny flying mosquito-sized skeet cams hovering up and down the mountain. Still others, billions as it turned out, would watch a summary of the event later. He made the camera click gesture again, turning his VR back on. A crew of six surrounded Charlie as he prepared for the official recording of his first Olympic snowboard run. Actually, it was his first time on a snowboard ever. Two of the crew were really there, and the other four were VRing in from various locations. From a place in Lansing, Michigan, 1,500 miles away, Tara Froma made some wardrobe adjustments and selected the final colors of Charlie's ski outfit. It had a series of backward-sweeping, elongated triangles that would shimmer up and down his sides and change colors as he changed speed. She pretended she needed to adjust his collar as an excuse to breathe in his scent. Leaning against his six-foot-three-inch body, she rolled the collar with her O-Touch activated fingertips. O-Touch, O-Cloth, O-Eyes, O-Credits, O-Me-Too. Orchard International practically owned the lowercase letter O, putting it in front of everything they manufactured or wrote software for. Tara pretended to brush some lint off the back of Charlie's pants and gave his behind a squeeze. Charlie squeezed the muscle in his butt back at her. Pushing herself at arm's length, she grinned, one eyebrow cocked. All set, boss. Charlie gave her his famous end smile, filled with the innocent enthusiasm of Jimmy Stewart, and he switched to a private channel, otherwise a PC. It projected a static copy of himself to everyone else, so they couldn't overhear his conversation or read his lips. I'll be back in Lansing before noon. I have lunch with Jeff and a couple of meetings after that. Oh, lunch with Jeff. Will you be all right? Sure, sure, he lied. I mean, having to shut off in, I know what that does to you. He shrugged it off. Yeah, I'll be fine. So are we still on for tonight? Eight o'clock. It's already on my schedule. You read my mind, sweetie. Of course I did. Charlie got a call from Rob. Oops, boss calling. I'd probably better not leave it to my Omi too. See you tonight. Okay, bye. He watched her wave away the calm, and her face disappeared. Charlie flicked open the line and found Rob standing in front of him, foggy breath pluming from his mouth. Hey, boss, what's the haps? 
I just wanted you to know we picked up four more investors who will be taking a look today, giving us a total of nine new ones. Rob flicked their information to Charlie. In a nanosecond, he knew everything publicly available about them, along with some private data. Depending on your show, we could go over five big ones. But no pressure, of course, son. Rob Reynolds' gape tooth grin pulled his round cheeks so high Charlie could hardly see anything but the sparkle in his eyes. Charlie had a special affection for him. Even though Rob was younger than Charlie by 30 years, Rob called him son because he was the father of Charlie's third wife, Barbara, who had died in a car accident six years earlier. The self-driving old cars hadn't become mandatory yet. Seems you could repair broken DNA, but you still couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Charlie had a hard time getting over her loss and dealt with it by throwing himself even harder into his work. That was not a problem today. Things are going great here, boss. Then his lips tightened. But I keep wishing Linda could see us. She would be so proud of how far we've come. I know. But having her expertise inside the enhanced servers is the next best thing to having her here. Not even close. Charlie pictured Linda at her desk littered with empty food containers and how she chewed with her mouth open, unable to stop the wild flow of ideas long enough to swallow. He flashed back on her funeral, thinking how odd it had been when only five people showed up in Rio. The others couldn't be bothered with anything more than a comfy, long-distance VR appearance. Remembering that cold day and how much he hated snow, the irony of his doing this demo here in February was not lost on him. He sighed and glanced at Rob. You know, sometimes I get the feeling Linda's looking over my shoulder. Rob nodded thoughtfully. You still feeling guilty about her death? Charlie shook his head. That's not it. I feel guilty for thinking we could do without her. It even feels slimy saying it now. Yeah, I see what you mean. Charlie shot him a pained smile. Thanks for the support, Rob. It wasn't your fault, you know. You don't know that. Is there something you haven't told me, son? No, just that I still think it might be corporate espionage. If what happened is because of N, it would be my fault. Wrong. And besides, there's still no evidence. It's a feeling I have. You mean Linda's intuition? Can't go to the police with that. After the way they treated me last time, I won't go to them for anything. Rob nodded and looked down at his shoes. You know, I'm going to find out what happened to her. Charlie's tone was jagged. Once we get some expert investigators into the system, I'll be able to do a better job of finding her killer than Sherlock Holmes. I don't believe in that no evidence crap the police came up with. Now don't go sticking your nose in where it doesn't belong. Rob's forehead furrowed with concern. Charlie reared back. Are you saying I should forget about it? No, son, but there are laws about interfering with ongoing investigations. Ongoing? Ha! They're not doing anything. Rob nodded slowly. Maybe. He paused and looked directly into Charlie's eyes. Just so you know, I miss her too. I know. Rob's eyes regained their spark. Well, I'm glad I had a chance to come up here and give you this little pep talk. Charlie laughed. Yeah, you have been kind of a downer. Rob patted his shoulder. Charlie raised his face skyward. Okay, Linda, this one's for you. He kissed his hand and flicked a pair of bright red lips into the clouds. As they faded, he turned back to Rob. Anything else? No, just want to wish you good luck and give me a ring later. How about a nice little bracelet instead? It was one of their running jokes. Now go have a VR cigar and relax until your part. Oh, now you're making fun of me. I am not. But you know, you would give brilliant speeches if you strapped on N. As CEO, you have a responsibility. Yeah, yeah, not just yet, okay? Charlie gave him a resigned shrug. All right. Anyway, you can count the money after the show. Rob chuckled. I'll do just that. Have a good time and be safe. We need you around here, son. Rob waved off the PC to release Charlie, but he stayed online invisibly to watch the rest of the setup and nervously await his little spot on the show.